What is up, Finn fans? Week three, preseason game. Jacksonville came down to Miami. Did they win? Did they lose? They lost 22 to seven. Miami Dolphins win this third preseason game. Two and one on the preseason. It don't really matter. Records don't matter. Final score don't matter. But don't get me wrong. Winning feels really nice. I got a ton to talk about. Been taking notes the whole game. If you guys were in the live stream, yeah, I had a huge surprise for you guys. My dad was in the live stream hanging out. So if you guys want to go back and watch it and watch our live reactions to some great, great plays, you can go back and watch the live stream. Like I said, my dad was there. He will be back on the channel doing picks. Ton of stuff. But I'm going to talk about this game. I'm going to break down this game. I'm going to pick some winners, some, some of the top three performers of this game. Um, and then I'll give you guys a breakdown of what happened at the halftime with the fantasy football picks. But let's just jump into this. First team defense looked great. Looked great. Aguavin missed on a, a, a tackle. That wasn't a big deal to me. He had one flub up. Other than that, Aguavin played great. Baker played great. Pass rush was great. Stopping him left and right, left and right. At one point, and like I said, at one point, Aguavin got completely like shouldered by... Um, the running back for the Jags, his name is just completely out of my mind right now because I'm super excited. But great, Mika Fitzpatrick with that pop on the wide receiver to knock the ball out. Jerome Baker was on the coverage, and when he popped him to knock the ball, you could see Jerome Baker was like, where the hell did that come from? Great, great move. So the first team defense played great. First team defense held them for a good amount of the game. Then the first team offense came on the field. I, 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 didn't look good. And again, it's preseason. Larry Tunsil didn't play. It was a healthy scratch. Um, Parker didn't play. Grant didn't play. A lot of a lot of the starters for the offense didn't play. A few of the starters for the defense didn't play. Uh, Ginkle, Rashad Jones, McDonald, McMillan. But that first team offense, the no running, no run game for the whole first half of the game. Barely any run game. Uh, couldn't block for their lives. Fitz was running all over the field, had no time to do anything. The offensive line worries me. And I know a lot of people were saying in the chat, well, Laramie Tunsil wasn't in there. I get that. I wholeheartedly get that. But Laramie Tunsil was the left tackle. The whole right side line of the line did horrible. Dwayne Allen, I think it was a third and four. Hands off to Blige. Fitz. Dwayne Allen would have just blocked his dude. I honestly think he would have got the first down, but Dwayne Allen just lost on his block. It was bad. It was, it was bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, I know Tunsil in there does make a world of a difference because they can scheme their blocks a little bit differently, but it was they struggled. He went up against Clay's Campbell. They struggled, but, you know, it is what it is. Then Eric Rowe. Defense comes back on the field. <laughs> defense comes back on the field. Eric Rowe gets that interception, that beautiful interception. I'm telling you, defense... Great, great, great. Gaziki with the nice catch. Offense starts picking it up a little bit. Gaziki, Gaziki had a great, not great, but Gaziki had a very good game today. Um, he gets the pass interference, which kind of like, he has a great catch from uh, on the run. You know, Fitz has to run, get on the run, because he has no time in the pocket. Nice, nice pass to Gaziki. And then Gaziki gets the pass interference. And it was a blatant pass interference. Runs up to the defensive back, puts his arms up, runs into him, and then... Dude, you 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 did a PI. Come on, but it was bad blocking. Bad blocking. Then the big hit, Lemons or Lemons or whatever you want to call him, special team or Gunner was fantastic. The guy, the dude's knee was down, but he blasted him to cause the fumble, which obviously wasn't a fumble. His knee was down. Got down the field. Him and Armstrong, great Gunners, great on the special team, great getting down there. Super super great to see. Um, Aguavin, like I said, there was the one, he tried to pull, um, a Palomalu and judge the snap to jump over the line, but he ran through it and they called him off sides. And at first I was like, wow, he was way off sides. You know, he didn't have the timing. Well, they should have get an instant replay. The ball was snapped by the time he, it was perfect, but you can't challenge off sides. That was a BS flag. I think that was the only flag of the game that I was like, that's BS. Because Eric Rowe gets a pass interference call that he grabbed the guy's waist, didn't even look, look by, holding his arm down. It is what it is. Um, good call on pushing Jags back. So essentially, the Jaguars are 
marching down the field, and the Dolphins, you know, they're, they're in field goal range, get a holding call. But the Dolphins hold them. So it's fourth and down on the, on the Dolphins, like 25, 30 yard line. And then you think, oh, they're just going to kick the field goal. But Brian Flores was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to accept that penalty. So now it's third and long from their own 40. Dolphins cause an incomplete pass. They got to kick a field goal there. He misses it. That's head coaching. That's to know and trust. My defense is playing great. My defense is going to do great. My defense is going to stop them. Stops them. Holds them. Misses the field goal. Great, great, great. And then Fitz with, like, Walton comes in. Balazs was done. Walton comes in. Walton had a great game. Um, Fitz just play action. Here comes the pressure off the edge. Stood there. Dropped it off to Walton, who catches it. And trots, trots his little ass in the end zone. Touchdown. We go up. And then Sanders misses the extra point. I don't understand how he missed the extra point because later on in the game, we get a holding call when we went for two, converted the two. We got a holding call from Jordan Mills, who he's going to be cut. He's not making the team. The run went up the middle. Jordan Mills gets a holding on the... Hey, come on, dude. So we get not pushed back, and then Sanders makes that field goal. He misses one from 15 yards out, but makes it from friggin' 25 out. Uh, then Rosen comes in. I'm going to put my, my notes down for this one. Then Josh Rosen comes in, finally. Third quarter. I think it was five, six minutes left in the third quarter. Josh Rosen comes in. Uh, the wide receiver we picked up, Reming, uh, he was doing kick returns, punt returns, and he, he kept, caught the ball on the two-yard line and got tackled at the five. Then we get a holding penalty, which puts us on the one. He ain't making the team. Um... So then Rosen comes in. He's on his one one yard line. Cadence. There's a few times even Fitz got us a first down off of Cadence. And if you don't know what Cadence is, it's when they get under center and they go, hut, hut, hut. Cadence. Josh Rosen gets us five more yards. Gets us an offside. Jaguars are a little antsy in the pantsy. Gets five yards. Josh Rosen, 99 yards on his first drive. Marches us down the field. Gets us in the end zone. Love it. Love every minute of that drive. There was a, actually, no, let me take that back. I didn't love every minute of that drive. Josh Rosen had to run for his life a few times. There was the rollout where he evaded two sackers, rolled to his right, had a linebacker literally right in his face, throws a 35-yard pass to Isaiah Ford, who was covered. He was running a, 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 a long route across the field, had a few guys around him, but the fact that he throws this pass perfectly into Isaiah Ford's hands with this linebacker about to destroy the man was great, great. Not only that, there was a few times where he ran the ball to get a first down. When he was down in the goal line, <laughs> when in the red zone, he, had to, he evaded three rushers coming after him. I thought he was going to die. Evades them, then bounces off of a cornerback's hit to get the first down. Loved every minute of it. Was great to see. Um, yes, there's a few flags that it helped him, but he took everything else his way. Also in that 99-yard drive, Laird, the running back. This dude has to make the team. I don't think he'll make the uh, make clear waivers to make practice squad. He has to make the team. The dude was making run after run. You think he could tackle for a loss? Run him over. Keep going. I keep him on the team as a backup fullback. In all honesty, I take O'Leary. You'd be straight uh, tight end. Leary, whoever else straight tight end, I'd have Cox and Laird as my fullbacks, and I'd keep them on the team because Laird did absolutely great. Fitz, uh, Rosen did re like you. You got to give Rosen credit on that drive. Like, I don't want to hear the yeah buts. He played the second string uh, defense of the Jags. All right, cool. So you're gonna tell me with that linebacker coming in his face? Oh, that's a second string or a third-string linebacker, so it doesn't count that he got completely demolished after making that throw and a perfect dot to Isaiah Ford. There's been two times on that drive where he took a hit. He took a huge hit just to make the pass. But because they're a second- or third-stringer, that hit doesn't count, and him standing in the pocket or him evading this crazy pass rush because he's playing with the second- or third-tier offensive line, so he's getting no pocket protection, so he's making these moves and doing these things. So if you're going to take the credit away from him because he's playing second- and third-stringers, then these second- and third-stringers are still killing him, and his second- and third-string offensive line is not doing anything for him. Don't give credit to the one and not the other.
Same thing with Fitz last week, who did horrible with the second stringers, but Rosen did good with the first stringers. Now again, I'm praising Rosen. Rosen did well. Rosen did really well on that drive. But, and here's a big fat but, it was second and four, second and three. Second and three. Clive Wolford runs a three yard up and out to the sideline route. Josh Rosen throws the pass to him. Horrible duck of a pass to the point where Wolford catches the ball, lands on the ground, and we lost a yard on the play. Instead of him, the pass being on time, on point, Wolford would have caught it and probably would have gained another three, four yards, get the first down. So then it ended up being like third and four. We still converted the third down, but he did great, but he still, he still does these little flubs here and there. And you can, those flubs might cost you a game. But again, not taken away from him doing great and marching the team down the field. Him and Laird marched the team down the field to score, the, uh, to score, to score. but you, I'm going to praise you, but I'm also going to pick out some of your imperfections that I've noticed. And that was one of them. But the Laird touchdown, the second team defense did pr play pretty well. Um, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. In a hole, in a hole, this team played really well today. 22-7, to seven, fellas. Fitzpatrick, 12 for 8, 126 yards, one touchdown. Josh Rosen, 5 for 7, 59 yards. That's not bad. Patrick Laird, 6 rushes, 26 yards, 4.3 in that touchdown. Like, he did great. Josh Rosen, 4 rushes for 23 yards, 5.8. He was running for his life out there. Like, you kidding me, people? And then receiving, Mike Kosicki made that great catch. And then fell, hit the ball, hit him in the sternum, knocked the wind out of him. Still did great. Isaiah Ford, 2 catches, 45 yards. Nick O'Leary. Catches that ball, shoulders the guy, runs it another 20 yards. Loved every minute of it. Mark Walton, four catches, 20 yards. Got to give Mark Walton the credit. How much rushing did he have? Not much, but they, they got him in there when they could. I'm liking what I'm seeing from this team. In this game alone, I'm liking what I'm seeing from this team. If starters played, this team is giving me a lot of hope. And I'm, it's scaring me because when the team gives me a lot of hope, they end up hurting me but I like what I'm seeing from this team. I'm not giving you guys my record prediction. I said I was gonna make that video uh, the, the, week, the week of the kickoff game, but I'm liking, I'm really liking this. The defense is just, I love it. The speed, Aguavin, Baker, constantly in the backfield. A few times Baker was blowing through the line making tackles. And if he would trip up a guy and the guy would keep going, Guavin was there to wrap him up and clean it up. Loving it. Top players, Josh Rosen. You gotta give it to Josh Rosen. Did great marching down the field. Did his thing. The whole defense. There was a few flubs here and there from uh, Rowe and Needham. But the whole first team defense, especially Baker and Aguavin, killing it. Laird. The dude, whenever he gets the ball in his hands, just absolutely kills it. I am really like what I'm seeing. Um, next week, fourth preseason game, Thursday. I think we have the Saints. And then that's it, fellas. That's it. But overall, Dolphins win 22-7. Love what the team did today. I love what I saw from Rosen. I love what I saw from Fitz. Sometimes Fitz threw a few ducks, but he, again, he was constantly on the run. Constantly on the run. They need some help on the offensive line, but I think it's too late in the season to really bring someone in who's going to start. I think our starting offensive line is kind of what we have, which sucks. Uh, we'll see how that goes, especially against the Ravens, which who are going to get after you. They're going to get after you. But... I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I was happy with this game. Happy you guys got to hang out with me and my dad. Again, my dad's going to be on this channel with the fantasy football. I picked you guys at halftime. I got, I think, 18 of you guys. The winner from last year is getting free in. So I'm going to be emailing you guys who I picked. We're going to start an email chain so I could pick the days and talk about it and do all that stuff. So check your emails for the guys that are in the league. Check your emails because if you don't and I, I have to fill spots, I'm going to get mad, and then I'm going to have to pick more people. So check your emails. Um, but other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Um, actually, no. Other than that, comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Who are your top three? What did you guys think of Rosen, Fitzpatrick? What did you guys think of the way the team played? How they got together? Uh, what did you guys think of all that stuff? Be sure to comment below. Then follow me on Twitter. Retweeting a ton of things. Um, talk to you guys on Twitter. I have great discussions with you guys on Twitter. I also have great discussions with you guys below. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out. A lot of you guys also send me really great emails to read, so I really do appreciate that. You guys also um, 
send me really great packages that I put behind me. So if you guys do want to send me anything, my PO box is below as well. But other than that, I will see you guys real soon, probably Monday, Monday, Sunday, Monday with another video, breaking down some practice notes, all that stuff. Again, we can't get play by play. So I give you guys what Flores has to say, um, probably Sunday with what Flores has to say about the game. Um, but hit that thumbs up. Dolphins win. Dolphins look good. Rosen look good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Some hiccups here and there, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. Hit the thumbs up for that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you're watching from DolphinsTalk.com and you're new, hit that subscribe button. But other than that, I'll see you guys probably Sunday. But like usual, stay classy. Fins up.